Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of the Explained series, in which I explain a certain aspect of the game to the best of my ability. In this episode we will take a look at the Synchronize with Adjacent Stations option. Before we begin, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and hope you enjoy the holidays. Back to the video. The Synchronize with Adjacent Stations option allows you to have two or more coaster trains leave their station at the same time. If one train is ready to leave, but there is no train ready to leave on the station that it is synchronized with, it will wait until the other station does have a train ready to depart. This is useful for making racing or dueling coasters, but it is also useful for a fairly big excitement boost. First I will explain how you get the synchronization option to work, and then I will explain what boost to your stats it gives. First things first. The option is located at the bottom of the Operations Options tab, which is the one with the gears on it. For two coasters to synchronize, they both need to have the option checked. Both coasters also need to be open or in test mode. If one of the coasters is closed, the other coaster will not wait, although the game does still recognize that they are synchronized, as you will see later on in the video. Just checking the option for two coasters and opening them isn't enough though. Their stations also need to be in certain positions relative to each other. The stations always have to be on the same height, but that's not all there is to it. Very often you see that the first tiles of the stations are right next to each other, but that is not the only way to have two rides synchronize. If you look at this station, you can see that I have made the tiles next to it grey. I will call these tiles the synchronization range of this particular station. If the first tile of two stations are within the synchronization ranges of each other, they will synchronize. This means that these setups will all work. I have made the first tile of every station dark red or dark blue to make it easier to find them. If you look at every example here, you can see that both first tiles are inside the synchronization range of the other station. All these pairs will synchronize with each other if both options are checked. Now let's take a look at some examples that will not synchronize with each other. The pair on the left won't synchronize because even though they have quite some overlap, their first tiles are not in the synchronization range of the other station. The middle pair won't synchronize because they have no overlap at all. And the pair on the right won't synchronize because there is space between them. The synchronization range extends only a single tile from the stations, meaning that it will only work if they are right next to each other. In OpenRCT2, the pair on the right will synchronize. This is because the synchronization range has been extended from a single tile to six tiles. This makes synchronizing dueling coasters a lot easier and allows for more flexibility. Now it gets interesting. It is possible to have one station be in the synchronization range of the other station, while the opposite is not true. Take a look at these setups. In every setup the blue station is in the range of the red station, while the red station is not in the range of the blue station. What will happen in cases like this? As you can see here, the blue station will wait for the red station, while the red station will not wait for the blue station. This might not be as useful as the situation where both trains wait for each other, but I am sure there are some interesting applications of this. While I was making this video, I discovered more differences between RCT2 Vanilla and OpenRCT2. I don't want to remake the entire video, so I will put it in here. In Vanilla or Classic, if you enable the synchronize option, but there is no station for it to synchronize with, it will simply stop going. This means that the previous setups, where only one of the two stations synchronizes, don't work. The blue station will wait for the red station as normal, but since there is no station for the red one to synchronize with, it will never leave the station, leading to the blue train also never leaving the station. Situations like this have happened before and will probably happen again. I do all of my testing in OpenRCT2 and I don't know all the intended or unintended changes that have been made. I try to also test things in Vanilla or Classic when I think that's necessary, but it takes a lot longer and sometimes I just forget about it. 
Now that we know how the synchronization option works, let's see how this applies to setups that have more than two coasters. The first one is simple, and that is multiple stations that all synchronize with each other. If you have four stations like these two setups, they will all wait for each other and only depart if all four have a train ready. As long as all the stations are in the synchronization range of all other stations, this works. The most stations you can synchronize at once is 16. If you have more than that and they all have the option checked, one of them will not depart the station at all. Which one it is seems to be based on position of the map. No matter in which order I build these 18 stations or in which order I enable the synchronization options, the two on the left will always stop going. The next situation we are going to look at is one where I am not entirely sure how it works. Here we have three stations that all have the synchronization option enabled. At the moment the blue and yellow coasters are in test mode. The blue coaster waits for the yellow coaster and the yellow coaster ignores the blue coaster. So far so good. However, when I open the red coaster as well, all rules seem to go out the window. The red coaster will always wait for the blue coaster, which is what we expect. However, the blue coaster will not always wait for the yellow coaster anymore. It seems that as long as the red coaster is waiting for the blue coaster, that takes priority and the blue coaster suddenly ignores the yellow coaster. If the red coaster is not at its station, the blue coaster will wait for the yellow coaster like normal. I'm not sure why this happens, but at least there seems to be some sort of pattern. If I extend the red station so that its first tile is next to the last tile of the yellow station, it will work as expected. I think that the fact that the red station is now within the range of the yellow station makes a difference. The range is transferred through the blue station, which makes the red station also wait for the yellow one. There are probably some aspects of synchronizing more than two stations that I have missed, especially with complex setups like this one, but I don't think those will be very important. One last trick I want to share with you is synchronizing two stations over a long distance by using multiple coasters. Say I have these two stations and I want to synchronize them. They are in their range, aside from the fact that they're too far apart. What you can do is add a bunch of station tiles between them and enable synchronization on all of them. Despite those rides being closed, the synchronization will carry over between them all the way to the other ride, allowing the two coasters to synchronize. As I mentioned at the start of the video, coasters will get a boost to the excitement rating when you turn on synchronization. The rules for this are a little more relaxed as the rides do not need to be open or in test mode to get the boost. This means that if you want some extra excitement on your coaster, all you need to do is build a single station tile, like in the previous example, next to it, and enable synchronization on both rides. The supporting ride is closed, so your coaster won't behave any differently, but you still get the bonus. This also works in Vanilla and Classic, because even though the ride is closed, it does count as another station to synchronize with. If you have a situation like this, where the blue coaster waits for the red coaster but not the other way around, only the blue coaster will get the stat bonus. For most rides, this stat bonus is 0.40 extra excitement and 0.05 extra intensity. As far as I know, this is the only way to change the intensity rating of a ride without retesting it. A couple of rides get different bonus though. The car ride, ghost train, monorail cycles and mini helicopters get 0.15 excitement and no intensity. The bobsleigh coaster gets 0.20 excitement and no intensity. The hardline twister coaster gets 0.20 excitement and 0.04 intensity. The river rapids gets 0.30 excitement and 0.05 intensity. The wild mouse, inverted hairpin and wooden wild mouse get 0.40 excitement and 0.08 intensity. The stand-up coaster and suspended swinging coaster get 0.40 excitement and 0.10 intensity. The inverted coaster, inverted impulse coaster and compact inverted coaster get 0.42 excitement and 0.05 intensity. The mini suspended coaster gets 0.45 excitement and 0.15 intensity. 
the dinghy slide gets 0.50 excitement and 0.05 intensity, the air-powered vertical coaster gets 0.60 excitement and 0.05 intensity, the reverse freefall coaster gets 0.60 excitement and 0.15 intensity, and lastly, the steeplechase gets 0.75 excitement and 0.09 intensity. All other rides that can synchronize with other stations get 0.40 excitement and 0.05 intensity. These bonuses are very useful if you need to get some more excitement on your coasters in scenarios where the goal is to have a certain excitement rating on 5 or 10 coasters, or when you just want to get the highest excitement rating possible. I believe that is pretty much all there is to say about the synchronize with adjacent stations option. If you have any questions leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.